Welcome to another episode of the Weekly Roundup. Today we will be discussing ivermectin, in which 98% better with between 4 and 500 patients, with more research from Dr. Tarek Alam in Bangladesh. Then, 60 Degrees Pharmaceutical and Collaborative Team declare that antiparasitic tefenoquin zaps SARS-CoV-2 in a cell culture. Then, India approves itolizumab and tocilizumab for COVID-19, while controversy commences about the data while the demand soars. And finally, we'll be talking about a story involving interferon, which may help prevent and slow COVID-19. From Trial Site News, I'm Adrian, and our show starts now. For today's episode of the Weekly Roundup, we start in Bangladesh, where Dr. Tarek Alam, whom we here at Trial Site News have interviewed about this story in recent past, and who is a highly respected physician and professor of medicine at Bangladesh Medical College, or BMC, used two economical and easily available drugs to treat patients suffering from COVID-19 with considerable success in not only reducing the patient's viral load, but also cutting the severity of their cases. Now, in the most recent press out, we find that Dr. Alam reports that 98% of his COVID-19 patients are cured by the combined use of antiparasitic drug ivermectin and antibiotic doxycycline within 4 to 14 days. And as Dr. Alam reported to Trial Site News, he secured BMC-approved protocol to use this combination to great success. Now, Dr. Alam was recently highlighted by United News of Bangladesh, or the UNB, for his study back in April. Dr. Alam told the UNB via a virtual interview that, what we've found is that it's better to use the two drugs as soon as possible after a person is tested positive for symptoms is seen. We used the drugs within five to six days on all patients and almost all got cured. Thus far, he has used the combination of ivermectin and doxycycline on some 4 to 500 COVID patients since April. Now, it should be noted that a handful of patients with comorbidities ended up at the intensive care unit, and two patients died despite treatments with both remdesivir and plasma therapy. Now, as Dr. Alam told Trial Site News, he was an absolute advocate of the randomized controlled study, which is now occurring, as he said it would, with Bangladesh's ICDDR. Now, as Trial Site News reported, the Institute has leveraged Dr. Alam's successful protocol to study the efficacy and safety of ivermectin and doxycycline in combination in patients with COVID-19 infection. This clinical trial should conclude within a month. Now, in the meantime, Dr. Alam also pursues more research to demonstrate that this protocol can work to an overwhelmingly dismissive medical and scientific community. And so, in conclusion to this story, in the UMB article, the authors take the reader through the origin of ivermectin, the Monash University lab research breakthrough, and highlight Dr. Alam's caution that far more complex cases, whether elderly patients or those with comorbidities, that hospitalization and other medicines are in order. Dr. Alam also reminds that none of the medicine should be taken arbitrarily and without a prescribing physician. Based on the Trial Site News interview results, it is very clear that Dr. Alam wants more research done. Despite such a high success rate with hundreds of patients, there is still not yet enough known about SARS-CoV-2 or why certain treatments might work, at least in certain cases some of the time until there is substantially more evidence. But it can be declared that in hospitals and medical facilities around the world, from Bangladesh and India to Peru and Mexico and the Dominican Republic, that there is accumulating localized data pointing towards real promise here. And in the middle of a pandemic where lives are at stake, Prominent medical institutions in many of these nations have opted to use the drug off-label. Thus far, the reports coming out are overall positive. 
And in a final note, Trial Site News is reporting on an exciting ivermectin story in South America, and we hope to have this story available to share with you all soon. And of course, we'll keep you posted. For our next story on the Roundup, we turn to a small biotech company based in Washington, D.C., along with a group of collaborators including labs and drug services company, as well as support from the Gates Foundation, have found in a preclinical cell culture testing that an antiparasitic drug called tafenoquin is active against SARS-CoV-2 at clinically relevant concentrations. Now, this drug is interestingly similar to another antiparasitic drug, ivermectin, which Monash University in Australia showcased was also quite active against COVID-19. So, the company, 60 Degrees Pharmaceuticals, is majority owned by CEO Joffrey Drow, who spent a decade leading clinical research projects at Walter Reed. The brand name for this antiparasitic drug is Aracoda, and is currently used to treat malaria, much like hydroxychloroquine, as well as Plasmodium vivax. Now, in vitro testing in Vero E6 cells revealed that TQ seems to interfere with infectious virus replication and reduce the yield of progeny virus. Now, TQ also appears to exhibit greater potency and a different mode of action than hydroxychloroquine which is consistent with known differences in structure and modes of action against other organisms. Now, the team hasn't had their work peer-reviewed as of yet, but they did upload in the preprint server BioArchive. Now, this drug is sold under the brand name Crintafel, as well as others. This medication is used to treat malaria. It's taken by mouth, and it can be used against all types of malaria. The drug does produce common side effects from vomiting and headache to dizziness, and in some cases, trouble with sleeping and anaphylaxis. Now, additionally, there are reports of hemoglobinemia, and in those with G6PD deficiency, red blood cell breakdown might occur. The drug was approved for medical use in Australia and the United States in 2018. And in the United States, as of 2019, a course of treatment costs about $43. Tefenoquin is related to Primaquin. Now, one version of the product is made by GlaxoSmithKline and the other by 60 Degrees Pharmaceuticals and is known as Aracoda. And so, the application of Aracoda, or tefenoquin, could introduce yet another antiparasitic drug that possibly inhibits SARS-CoV-2 in a lab environment, at least based on these initial results. The team will further evaluate in lab environment to identify if it is safe and an effective therapeutic to slow the COVID-19 pandemic. Trial site news will, of course, be monitoring, and we'll update this story as more details come in. Now, recently, a research team published in Science a report called Can Interferons Stop COVID-19 Before It Takes Hold? With a huge void in COVID-19 treatments and a growing public health crisis, could it be that interferons play a key role in a strategy to slow down the pandemic? New research suggests COVID-19 disables interferons. If so, the authors argue synthetic interferons given prior or soon after COVID-19 infection may tame the virus before it causes serious disease. Some recent studies support this presumption, and it should be noted that several interferons have been approved by the FDA for decades, and their use includes cancer and hepatitis. Notably, there was a preventative trial in Hubei, China, resulting in zero infections among 2,415 medical workers who used daily interferon nose drops, as was reported in a yet-to-be peer-reviewed paper uploaded to the preprint server MedArchive. Meanwhile, researchers at Sanford and the University of Southampton are asking the prevention question, and results from the later site are due in August. Now, according to Andrea Wack, immunologist at the Francis Crick Institute, every study in every species has shown that if you induce interferons before a virus comes in, the virus loses. The earlier you can give it, the better. And the best thing you can do is to give it before the virus is there. Now, Miriam, also an immunologist at the ICANN School of Medicine at Mount Sinai, noted that it's going to be important to know when to give these drugs. Given late, they could exasperate the out-of-control inflammation that marks the stage of the disease. 
Now, another team led by immunologist Benjamin Terrier at Paris Cochin Hospital has also published as a MedArchive preprint. They looked at blood from 50 patients and found strikingly depressed interferon activity and elevated chemokines in those whose disease became severe and critical, but not in those who ended up with mild or moderate disease. They posit that once interferons are reduced, the virus gins up tissue, damaging inflammation. This, along with more inflammation from the immune systems, can result in death. But Rockefeller University infectious disease geneticist Jean Laurent Casanova asks whether low interferons are the cause or consequence of severe disease. Now, since 2015, Casanova has found three inherited mutations that profoundly inhibit the interferon response, raising the possibility that genetic predisposition plays a role in some cases of severe COVID-19. Nature also notes that other studies have found evidence that suggest interferons are not suppressed during COVID-19. Now, interferons are known for horrible side effects, but that is in the context of long-term usage, example for cancer, and one trial in chronic hepatitis showed that a synthetic type 3 interferon had fewer side effects than a type 1 interferon. Now, Trial Site News will continue to monitor for interferon studies around the world. Now, on to India's Central Drugs Standard Control Organization, or the CDSCO, which approved itolizumab for patients infected with COVID-19. Now, tocilizumab's use for COVID-19 is accepted off-label by the Indian regulator. The drug is made by Roche and is considered costly and not as easily procured. Demand is robust as hospital providers are administering aggressive treatments to keep patients from progressing into severe and critical states in a bid to reduce deaths. Certain more critical circles within India, however, are concerned about how itolizumab was rushed through to approval by regulators and the drug sponsor called Biocon Limited of Bangladesh. The Director General of the Indian Council of Medical Researcher, Bhargava, frets that there is a lack of sufficient evidence from the clinical trials that these drugs reduce the death rate in COVID-19 patients. In the meantime, demand for tocilizumab soars despite the lack of comprehensive evidence that it treats COVID-19. Meanwhile, we here at Trial Site News have raised the cautionary point about whether IL-6 inhibitors are the right path to treat COVID-19 based on unfolding clinical research evidence. So let's talk about these drugs. Tocilizumab, or Actemra, is an immunosuppressive drug mainly used for rheumatoid arthritis treatments and systemic juvenile idiopathic arthritis. It is a humanized monoclonal antibody against the interleukin-6 receptor. Now, interleukin-6 is a cytokine that plays an important role in immune response and is implicated in the pathogenesis of many diseases. Now, itolizumab is a humanized IgG1 monoclonal antibody developed by India-based BioCon and the Center for Molecular Immunology in Havana, Cuba. So let's shift gears then and talk about the clinical trials surrounding this drug, tocilizumab. Now, as will be shown, there is absolutely no legitimate clinical trials pointing to clear evidence that tocilizumab is safe and effective for addressing at least certain COVID-19 patients. Now, as I mentioned earlier, that despite this, due to a number of unfolding dynamics, it was approved, and in the process, demand has skyrocketed, so much so that black markets have formed, and the Indian middle to upper class must shell out a lot of money for that part of the world to access the drug. So let's take a closer look here. First up, we look at tocilizumab, which failed in an Italian study involving 126 patients, which showed no benefit in patients treated either in terms of aggravation, in other words, entry to intensive care, or in terms of survival. In this population of patients at a less advanced stage of disease, the study can be considered important and conclusive, while in patients of greater severity, the results of other studies still ongoing are expected. That being said, there are at least 43 ongoing COVID-19 trials testing this drug. 
However, we do see smaller off-label cases which revealed some promise, as Paolo, an Italian doctor, reported that tocilizumab appears to show effectivity in three severe COVID-19 cases back in March. Those results led to patient improvement, and the Italian Pharmacological Agency expanded testing to five other hospitals, which this led to Roche expanding studies there. Also in early March, China's regulatory authority approved tocilizumab for the treatment of patients with COVID-19. According to sources, Chinese authorities have only used the medicine on 21 patients. Now, in association with the donation of the drug to China during the pandemic, Roche acknowledged that there is no evidence as to the drug's efficacy to help COVID-19 patients. And then in Australia, the drug is considered an off-label treatment for COVID-19 patients associated with acute respiratory distress syndrome, or ARDS. Because the immunosuppressive is associated with benefits to cytokine storm treatment caused by a specific cancer treatment, the cytokine storm is associated with mortality in severe to critical COVID-19 cases. But holding this up as evidence for an effective treatment against COVID-19 is a bit of a stretch, considering the side effects. And so, Trial Site News continues to monitor and track how nations are considering various drugs being used to treat COVID-19. And finally, we come to the part of the episode where we take a look at a few of the comments left by our viewers from our previous Weekly Roundup episode. As always, we read all the comments we get, although we can't respond to them all. Watsatuya says, Excellent reporting. So glad I found your site. Thank you, Watsatuya. We're glad you're enjoying our reporting. AG says, Favapiravir sounds promising. Well, we certainly think it's worth keeping track of, and we'll continue to keep on updating our readers and viewers on this and other drugs as the data continues to come in. And finally, Robert Perkins says, thank you so much for the updates. Always following the latest ivermectin news, but hearing about other interesting treatments is nice, too. Please keep them coming. Absolutely, Robert. We'll certainly keep on reporting to our viewers and readers and keep them up to date on the many different treatments and drugs out there. And so, our episode comes to a close. Thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate each and every one of you. From Trial Site News, I'm Adrian, and this is the Weekly Roundup.